God is stronger than any force in nature. Absolutely true. He's stronger than anything. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Rod Hemmer. I'm Janice. This is Bible Discovery TV. Welcome to the program as we begin to study the Word of God and we continue on through Psalms as we focus on what God has said. Now, Corey is here with Ryan. Corey, what's going on? I'm going to be taking a look at the doors of the temple, uh, the temple of God in Jerusalem. Ryan? Well, today is part of our creation series through the Psalms. We're gonna be studying some of the amazing and intricate designs of the human body, specifically our bones. All right, very interesting. Our bones, fascinating, a bone scan and a bunch of other things, really interesting. All right, go ahead, Janice. My segment today is Our Amazing God. All right, very good. So get your Bible out and we're, we're going to look at what God has spoken to us today as we read the Bible because it's relevant today. And so as we look at it, hear what God is saying to you. Psalm 93 verses 1 through 5. The Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed. He has girded himself with strength. Surely the world is established so that it cannot be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. Your testimonies are very sure. Holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever. Psalm 93, verses 1 through 5. Psalm 90, 91, 92, 93, and 94 is what we covered today as we continue to go through the Bible for the 32nd time. That's amazing. Every year we go through the Bible and it is exciting. Uh, one of the ways the Bible describes the voice of God is the sound of mighty rushing water. Now, when we stand on the seashore, when we hear the crashing waves, or when we stand next to a huge waterfall, the sound of water resonates in many frequencies. In fact, low sounds vibrate our body, it's true, and high frequencies help us to hear. But the voice of God is like none other. It bypasses our ears and penetrates our soul. It is the sound that creates life. Psalm 93 describes the majesty of the Almighty God and His supreme greatness over all. Even the forces of nature recognizes the Lord's power and, and lift Him up in praise and recognition of His eternal reign. So the Lord's character and His commitment is established forever. Now let us always acknowledge and praise our eternal King, who is from everlasting to everlasting, praise the Lord. Very, very important. Remember that the voice of God is definitely unique when we talk about it. Take your Bible guide and turn to today's passage. Uh, this is the last one in the book of May, so hopefully you've got your June already. If you don't have your Bible guide, you can write to us or call us or another way to do this is go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com. And when you go there, click on it. It'll take you to a donate page. Thank you for your donations. We very much appreciate them. That's how we survive around here. And, uh, and let me tell you that uh, we appreciate, we don't tell you how much to give because we feel that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. And we trust the work of the Holy Spirit in you. We will live with what God gives us and we will make our adjustments accordingly. So thank you so much for that. Now, today we need to pray for the voice of God. Father, I pray that you would help us to hear the voice of God. My goodness, Lord, hear the voice of God. You know, I, I think some people are a little afraid that the voice of God will be too powerful for them. But Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that it's true that your voice is holy because it comes from 
you who are holy. And I pray, Lord, that we would hear what you're saying to us so we can establish ourselves in holiness. Thank you, Father, because that's what we have to do right now. That's what's important for the rest of the world to see in Christians, people who believe in Christ. And if we don't believe in you, touch the people who are listening, who don't know you or don't truly understand you and touch their heart today with the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to learn in Jesus' name. And we all said together, amen and amen. Now, what does this mean, the voice of God? Now, now think about that because in Psalm 93, God becomes descriptive of what this is going to be. Music, and the music says this, the Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed. He has girded himself with strength. Surely the world is established so that it cannot be moved. Now your throne is established from old and you are from everlasting. The voice of God. That's amazing. What God says and what God does will not be moved or changed. It will not be. God's word is established and it is eternal. It is a solid foundation. That's why we believe in the word of God, because the Bible is a solid foundation. It is what God said. Now, I can tell you that there in today's world, there's a lot of people who don't believe that because they believe that everything's twisting and everything's turning and you can't tell what the next corner brings. But God actually speaks to us about the future because he's already seen the future and he's created the future. He already knows the future. Now, beloved, free will is involved here and people have chosen for, with their free will to reject God but God has the ability to choose those who have accepted him to navigate through their rejection of the Lord. That's fascinating. That's fascinating. And that's what the Lord says to us. Now, in chapter 93, verse 3, here is what the Psalms says. The floods have lifted up, O Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. Now, this is stunning. God is stronger and mightier than any force of nature. God is stronger and mightier than any force of nature. God most high is sovereign over all. Now, I want to tell you that I watched a program the other day taking the 1,400 volcanoes and uh, that we have that are active today and putting them and they decided to uh, see what the reaction would be if they all went off in the same day. It was very interesting. And the power and the, the, the majesty of those volcanoes was incredible. And yet God's voice is stronger than that. God has controlled all of that. And beloved, he takes care of all of us. And I want to tell you something, if you don't believe in God, I want to encourage you to reconsider your position because God tells us that there's coming a time when he will come from heaven, Revelation 19, and he will speak to the nations that rejected him. I want to be behind the Lord for that one, and I think you should be too. But this is how he describes the voice of God. The voice of God and the strength of God's words, they're, they're so powerful. And we don't pay attention. And when we think God's, you know, oftentimes the Lord speaks and he's very, very gentle and very quiet. And I'm glad because it seems to me like all the noise of social media and everything's all around me. But we need to pay attention, beloved, because God is speaking. And when he speaks, he seems so gentle. But what he says, very few words, is so powerful. I tell you, it's going to be amazing when we go to heaven and we see him and we hear his voice. Okay, Psalm 93, verse 5. Here is what the Bible says. Your testimonies are very sure. Holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever. Forever. You see, God's testimonies are true and eternal, which leaves me with these three words. God is Holy. Let me tell you something. 
The Lord Jesus Christ is holy. And I believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. He fulfilled over 300 prophecies about him in the Old Testament. And he fulfilled all of the prophecies in the New Testament. Let me tell you something. At the end of the New Testament, we see him return in the future. And we understand him. And by the way, all of our discussion about the end of time, uh, the various places of what we think, that, that's all timing. And God has it timed perfectly. Beloved, we need to understand that Jesus is Lord. And he's speaking today. Can you hear him? Listen closely. Because God speaks to us very clearly. Let's pay attention to the voice of God. Today, you and I are going to be taking a look at the temple in Jerusalem, but at a very specific detail. We're going to be focusing in on the doorways of the temple. There was a puzzling word associated with the with these doors uh, recorded in the scripture, but it turns out it's actually quite beautiful symbolically. Take a look. The field of archaeology has helped illuminate the puzzling description of the doorways of Solomon's temple. 1 Kings 6 gives us a description of the outer and inner doorways of the temple as having four and five mezuzot. Today, the word is used to reference rolls of scripture kept in decorative cases on the door frames of faithful observance of Judaism. While the word is very closely associated with doorposts, the Old Testament isn't referring to four and five rolls of scripture on the temple's doors. It's referring to some sort of architectural detail. Recent archaeological work in Kerbet Kaafa, a site occupied for a brief time around 1000 BC, unearthed a stone shrine model with an interesting door frame. This model's door has three interlocking or recessed door frames. The visual effect gives the impression of three rows of lintels and doorposts, with each door frame getting progressively smaller as you would enter the shrine. This recessed detailing was also found on a stone altar at Kaafa, further solidifying its connection with the sacred or holy. The tradition of multiple recessed frames with holy places and objects is known from Mesopotamia and the Northern Levant, but wasn't utilized in ancient Canaan. From the Bible's description of Solomon's temple doors, however, now paired with the discovery of the recessed door motif in the earliest of ancient Israeli society, researchers believe that this is how we should understand the Bible's description. In the other cultures of the Near East, two to three recessed frames were common, but the Bible states the temple's doors had four and five frames, which could be a purposeful stylistic difference setting apart the worship of Israel. It's believed from surviving evidence that Herod's temple complex maintained this style. So it's not surprising then that after the destruction of the second temple in AD 70, synagogues and churches continued to incorporate recessed door frames into their designs. You know, by and large in the modern West today, we have lost the idea of incorporating symbolism and a lot of meaning within our architecture, but we have maintained it in other things like our writing and our poetry and our music. So it is still easy for us to understand symbolism behind these things. And we are able to appreciate it uh, because we generally don't do it now. But it is a really interesting thing to take a look at just how dedicated ancient people were uh, to incorporating meaning into the things that they did when it came to their religious expressions. One of the things that's uh, interesting to me is today we're so we, we hurry up with everything, you know, everything is always like, well, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Yeah. We miss so much. Efficiency and cost yeah. and bottom line. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. I mean, we got to go to our next thing. We got to, because time is money and time is, you know. Yeah. And, you know, this is what we've lost. We've lost meditation and we've lost the ability to, to properly read the Bible and understand what God is saying to us. 
And there is no substitute for that. There is something that we've got to do. We've got to dedicate time to studying the Bible. When I say study, I don't mean like study, study, study. I mean like listening to, meditating, pertaining to, praying, and all that sort of thing when we read the Bible. That becomes very, very important. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Corey. I think mm -hmm. too, just to add on to that as well, that it, it is a discipline, isn't it? Like Absolutely. When you, when you meditate, and, and a lot of times we are so distracted because there's so much busyness in our lives that it does us well to put the phone away, to you know, put ourselves into a quiet place or, or somewhere mm -hmm. where we can focus, where we don't have those distractions constantly barraging us. And it's, it's a, 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 a discipline just to focus our own brains. Absolutely. Even when we don't have the distractions, we mm -hmm. create our own. We start thinking about, oh, what am I gonna have for lunch? Or when I'm finished with this, then I'm gonna go dust for a little while or, yeah. you know, and it, so it really is a discipline and God can help me, God can help you, us with that if we ask. That, that's exactly right. One of the key aspects of understanding what God's saying is, Lord, slow me down enough so that I'm not listening to everybody else to where I can actually hear you. That's very good. So that's a good report, Corey. Okay, Ryan, go. All right, well, today I'm continuing on with my study of God's creation as we read through the Psalms, and it's Psalm 139, which mentions God's most important creation, human beings. It says in verses 13 to 16, For you, O God, created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Wow, you know, these verses alone should be enough to settle the whole abortion debate for believers. This and other Bible passages like Jeremiah 1.5 are clear that from conception, that being is human. But actually, my segment today isn't about abortion, at least not directly. Today, I want to explore the human body, and specifically our bones, to show the reality that we truly are fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, at first glance, it may not seem that our bones are well designed because they're actually full of holes. But upon closer examination, it's been realized that these holes in our bones are actually a design feature that is extremely beneficial. That's why I've entitled today's segment, Good Bones. Check it out. Although we might assume that our bones are completely solid in structure, in reality, they're full of holes, a lot like a sponge. But this isn't some sort of a bone-eating disease, but rather a brilliant design feature by a master architect. Though it might seem like a poor design choice to create sponge-like skeletons, it is this very design which provides us the ultimate support. Indeed, Answers Magazine reports that spongy bone may look soft with all those holes, but there's nothing squishy about it. A closer look shows that its fibers are precisely placed to bear stress, like girders on a skyscraper. In fact, throughout your life, the bone is constantly dismantling and rebuilding those fibers, called trabeculae, to maintain the best configuration for changing loads, such as the shifting stresses caused by pregnancy. This marvelous design provides maximum strength at minimum weight. As a matter of fact, in the 1850s, anatomist Hermann von Meyer studied trabeculae within the human femur and later Swiss engineer Carl Kuhlmann even generated a mathematical model of the femur design. Then, in 1889, French engineer Gustave Eiffel, using Kuhlmann's mathematical model, designed and erected his now-famous Eiffel Tower, with a base that duplicated the upper end of our femur bones. This tower, which was originally built only as a temporary structure for the World's Fair in 1889, was criticized for its design by competing architects, who predicted it would soon fall under its own weight. Yet even with a height of 1,063 feet, the Eiffel Tower still stands strong today as a testimony to God's original brilliant design. Of course, this spongy bone, which is found predominantly inside the ends of the long bones, does more than just bear heavy loads. The holes also provide space to store marrow, which produces blood cells and the surfaces of all those trabeculae release calcium and phosphorus to maintain mineral balance in your body fluids. 
The almighty master craftsman has thought of every last detail, and it is clear that without his thoughtful engineering, we would utterly collapse and cease to function. Just as a tower requires a designer, so do we require a creator. You know, as we explore the creation, it becomes very, very evident that there has to be a creator, a master architect and engineer who has carefully and wonderfully made all things. In fact, a lot of our best man-made technologies actually come from studying the blueprints and designs of creation. Uh, for example, did you know that the idea for the light stick came from the observation of fireflies? Or that the anti-gravity space suit technology actually came from studying the giraffe? You know, creation is filled with stunning technology from the master designer, and such amazing design could have never arisen on its own. You know, there's, there's so much, Ryan, uh, involved in creation, in science of creation, that it's no wonder scientists and people and discoverers look at uh, all of these things when they try to come up with answers or solution to mm -hmm. things, you know. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, it, you know, even our veins are round and the wheel was not something that we invented, but it's something that you can look at in your body. You can look at this in other creatures and it's a wheel and mm -hmm. you can see how it goes and it's amazing. So there's a lot of uh, discovery that is really credited to God and scientific yep. creation. 100 yeah. percent. Very good. Very <laughs> Who good. isn't fascinated by I, fireflies? You call them lightning bugs. I do and I love them. Remember that I time do. when the kids were little and we yep. were on our way up north to Peterborough and, and it yes. was in July, early July, and all of a sudden the fireflies or the lightning bugs started to come out and we mm -hmm. parked the car yeah. and turned all the mm -hmm. lights off and you yeah. kids were just uh, delighted with all of that. These yeah. are so many of the amazing things that God has given us, yeah. uh, all of these little treasures. Well, my segment today is called Our Amazing God and Isn't He? Isn't He an Amazing God? You know, God is so much more than we could ever imagine or ever understand. He is not confined by time. God is not confined by nature. God is not confined. He's perfect and He is holy. And today, I don't have a lot to say because God is so amazing. What I wanted to do was, I know that we've read it earlier in the program. We read Psalm 93, but I want to read it again. I want to emphasize it one more time. The eternal reign of the Lord. And Psalm 93 says this. It's only five verses. The Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed. He has girded himself with strength. Surely the world is established so it cannot be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. Your testimonies are very sure. Holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever. That is our amazing God. And, and that, that really is amazing, and that's a song, and it's words to a song. And uh, if you could imagine the music, and, and this is what's beautiful about the psalm, is in all of them, in fact, we have the words, we don't have the music, but as we have music brought to us, because singing is the sound of our soul, then we can put these words to that music. So God is able to communicate. And, you know, there's some people who've done that already with the songs. Oh, yes. And and I love that, you know, because I, I mean, I'm, it's not that I enjoy the tune of the music because some of it's fast beat. And, you know, hammering and other, other, it's very calm and quiet music, same words, but God uses the words so that when we put music to it, we communicate what God is trying to say by using his words. And, and the word of God is important that way. And I've always said to people, I think you should really consider praying the Psalms. And uh, I don't know if anybody ever thought of this, but if, if you're a good singer or not a good singer, when you pray, you should gently sing the songs as well, because it's music. 
come up with your own melody or whatever, but sing the Psalms. And it's a part of meditation when you pray. I remember <clears throat> Pat Moore prayed the Psalms. She was an amazing, is an amazing person. And uh, she, she got into it and she was like 10 days into it and she came in and she was crying. Uh, she came into our prayer meeting and she said, these Psalms are amazing. I'm praying them and I just, it's just changed my life. And all it was, was the word of God, the word of God. So that's very important. And we've enjoyed going through the Psalms and we're going to go through a few more, but it's important to remember that. Now, by the way, I need to say, just so you understand as well, that we are on social media. We're on the Facebook and YouTube. We've been on that for a long time, but we've added a recent social media outlet and it's Rumble. Rumble's not new, but it's new to us. And we just want to let people know that you can go and see these programs on Rumble. So if there's something in the program you like or you want to see it again, just remember, go to Rumble and look up Bible Discovery TV. That's Bible Discovery TV. Search it on Rumble and uh, and you can get it. So that's very, very important. Also on our website, our program is available on the website too. Thank you and we'll continue. Today we pray and we say, Lord, I praise your name for making me holy as you are holy because I can't do it, Father. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, let me tell you something. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Facebook, YouTube, and Bible Discovery TV, we are live in a prayer meeting. We want to encourage you to join us and be a part of our prayer meeting at 3.30 to 4.30, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Friday.